So guess what? Your local website's getting no organic traffic. Neither was mine. We're going to tell you how to overcome that today and stick with us till the end of the video. We're going to give you tips and tricks you can implement now to make that happen immediately. Hi, welcome back to Blunt Force Business. I'm Brian LaFauci. And I'm Patrick Marino. And today we are talking to you about your local website and traffic on it. And this is where I slump in my seat. It's my good friend and partner in crime here, Patrick, pointed out to me quite some time ago. It's time for me to take over your website, Brian, because you are fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. It wasn't quite it. Oh, it wasn't close. quite the conversation. Pretty close. Um, but many of you are probably in the same boat, and they might not even know it. Well, I think what a lot of pe companies do is they set up a website, and they're like, well, wh where's the business? Yeah. <laughs> I have a website now. Where is everybody? Where's right? the beef? Where is the business? <laughs> and they don't realize that it, sometimes they can make small mistakes, or they, there's things they don't know that might help them just right. start. We're going to talk through that today. We're going to talk through it a little bit. Okay. All right. So blunt force facts to today in our call. Blunt force fact number one is... Dudes don't ask for directions. I don't know. I think this is a time and place thing. Like when we were growing up, well, first of all, <laughs> people had to ask for directions, right? Because we didn't have maps on our phone, right? So what would happen is you'd get lost and the dad wouldn't ask. I wouldn't. I never asked for directions. I would always just try and figure it out, right? But um, when the little Google bots come to your website, they need to figure out what your website's about and how to get through it. And they're not going to ask. If they can't figure it out, they're just going to move on. Love so it. That's why that's what that before. I got a story from. about that in a minute. Okay. Blunt force fact number two. This is a common blunt force fact. We've used it before, but words matter. As simple as that, right? We're trying to teach a robot something that's not real, what our website's about. You have to be explicit. You have to actually use keywords. You have to talk in the way that somebody would look for something or figure out what your website is about, what your product or service is, what town you're in. All, those all have to be included. Keyword search, baby. Blunt force fact number three. <laughs> Did you not write it down? I, I know. This game might not be for you. Oh, wait, I had it. Oh, you had it? Yeah, oh. deliberate pause. <laughs> pause for a fact. I thought, I thought you didn't write it down. Pause for a fact. Blunt force fact number three. This game might not be for you. <laughs> Steal my thunder. Depending on, depending on what you do, it might be it might be difficult to get traffic from search either because it's super competitive or it's just, it's new or it's the super niche thing that people don't really necessarily search for or even know about yet. So you're entering like a new product or a new service. So traffic is going to have to come from somewhere else. You might not be able to get organic website traffic. Yeah, I've you, struggled with this yeah. one. You've said it before. You know, sometimes you and I will like be talking about a client together and, and you'll be like, you know, this this specific thing, they might not even need it. Might, the website might not matter. Right. Right. And then, you know, sometimes we'll approach it like, let's just get a landing page. No one's going to search for this guy right. like in that capacity. It's not going to happen. Let's get a landing page. So if he wants to send someone somewhere, he can but really, we're going to use other methods. Exactly. You know? and, and, so, and that's okay. Like, there's a FOMO, big time FOMO with all the digital presences is, that are out there. You know, when you take them and you say, well, there's all these social medias and there's Google and there's Bing and then there's, then there's like actual like paper, paper advertisements still a thing and mailers are still a thing. And you know, all these things are out there and it can be overwhelming. And a lot of times... Companies can feel like, I need to be doing it all. Right. And if I'm not, I'm failing. Well, that's not really the case. And even when we talk about a website, there's a lot of companies out there where it doesn't really matter that much. Right. And it's not their main. One of our earliest conversations, you and I, we were doing a class and you were like, you need to have a website. Wasn't that it? Yeah, or you, need to have a face, you need to have a Facebook business page. And yeah, it might have been that or a website account. And the answer to both of those is no, you don't. Right. You don't need to have either one. But we, since, we, since we are talking about winner. websites, though, the big advantage of having a website is it's the one place where you can control everything. Yes. Right? If you have a Facebook business page, mm -hmm. there's like little slots 
Here's where I can put pictures. Here's where I can put information. I'm limited to the amount of information I can put in, right? If you're on Instagram, it's even a smaller amount of mm-hmm. things. Like companies are coming up with all sorts of creative ways, these link trees, these, you know, bio and link sort of things where it takes you to a new experience. But the website, you have 100% control over. Yep. So if you have the yep. time and money to invest into it, to keep it up and to do it, you should have one because it's your it's your way of saying this is how I want my business to be represented yep. at every stage. But, you know, again, not not necessarily for everybody. Right. And especially right. if you do it wrong, because this is the other thing that happens. And it happens more in e-com, which is not necessarily a local com, uh, local business thing, but it can be, where a website, somebody will set up a website, and they'll just be like, you know what, I don't feel like anybody looks at my website. Right. Because nobody contacts me through it. Right. You know, and then they'll be like, Patrick, can you look to see? Yeah. And I'll look, and they'll be like, there's like close to zero people go to your website. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, well, why do people not go to the website? That's and do we about. want to get them there? Exactly. So let's, let's talk to the businesses first that say that, Hey, listen, I want to get people there. Yeah. I need to get people there. And to our first blunt force fact of dudes don't ask for directions. Uh, let me tell a quick story yeah. and then we'll jump into how, how you recommend people create the, the map, yeah. right? The back end map. We were at Arlington National Cemetery looking for a headstone a couple days ago. And um, there's a map, back to maps, right? There's a map, and we kind of knew about where the section was, but we walked past about 15 different guards that are there to, like, make sure everything's safe and tell you where to go. We didn't ask one of them. And I thought that towards the end as we were getting close. I'm like, I hope we see one of the people so we can just ask them because it's ridiculous that we haven't asked anyone yet. It's so human nature to, I'm just going to figure it out yourself. Or it's old, old, old dude nature. Yeah, it is. It is. Old dude it is. nature. But we, we were with, uh, well, we were with a, you know, to, to degenderize this, we were with a mixed gender group and Nobody asked for directions. <laughs> Nobody's like, "Where's this section?" So, it was a it was a global th- global issue at that moment. So, talk us through how for our listeners, uh, we can create a map on their uh, to their website. So, really. a lot of companies will know this. They'll be like, "All right, well, how do I get traffic?" A lot of the because you've given this advice to um, start a blog. Right, I'm going to start a blog, and then with with a blog comes all this information. So, you know, you'll hear all this stuff like keyword research and looking for words that people search for and they'll develop all this content. And then when I go to the website and I do an audit, there's still no traffic, right? And it's like, how the hell did that happen? Well, depending on the platform, like, so in other words, the technology that the website's built, it can be difficult for the robots to figure out what your website is about. So sometimes you have to be more explicit and that's where maps come in, right? So websites can have sitemaps, right? And what the sitemap does is a little bit of instructions to basically tell the Google robot, because what Google does is it sends these little pieces of code out into the internet, and then they go to your website and they get to the front page. Like, okay, what's this website about? How do I get through the website to find everything in there? So what it's going to look for is what's called the sitemap, right? And what a sitemap does is it basically says is here's the pages on the website, Mm -hmm. and these are the ones that you need to find. Right, and then what it'll do is it will cr- the the word that's used is crawl. It will crawl through the website, find all the pages, and make an index of them. Okay. And now that Google knows what it is now, if you're if, if if a searcher out in the world searches for your product or service, mm-hmm. then Google will be like, oh, this website has that, and it will bring it up in a search. Now, bringing it up higher or lower in the search is a whole different conversation. But the initial point is the the. The Google robot needs to know what your website is about, right? So the sitemap helps, right? So what I feel like a lot of our listeners would do, which is what I did the first time I created a website, was I focused so much on what was front-facing because I thought that's what mattered the most, right? Like, oh, okay, Uh, I want people to see this, you know, the um, – and we did this a lot with uh, with the Spark Complex, right? I want people to see this picture of this really cool field we just did. So you get that front and center, but no description of the picture. No, you know, and th- and that 
sort of stuff is what you're talking about. Like that's the map. Yeah. Uh, Google. Yeah. Well, Google's well, also going to get better at it. It's going to mm, be able to look at a picture I, and I was, tell what it is. I was going to say. Yet. I was just going to say that we're almost there, yeah. but we're not. And even when we are, giving it the alt text is going to multiply that. Yeah. It's going to, you know, what I mean, it's going to increase that uh, searchability factor. So that back end information is almost more important than the front facing stuff because right. it's what's going to drive people here and creating that map. So we talked about this a little in the last video. Any tips you recommend to our listeners if they are going to tackle this themselves that you would give for them to help create the map? Well, let me get through the three first. Got the it. map is number one. Yep. Right. And then I'll tell you a, a quick hint on how to do that. Map is number one. Um, internal links is number two. Internal links. So links. So a link is just like, you know, hyperlink. So it's when the text is highlighted and if you click on it, it tells you where to go. Right. Got it. So what you can do is from that front page. Yep. To direct people to the other page is what do you usually have a menu? Right. Right. It's like, okay, well, here's the about us page. Here's the contact us page. Here's my service page. Those are good, but they're not as good as internal links. So an internal link might be like a text. So like you have a paragraph on the front page. My name is Brian LaFauci. My one strategy consulting business does this. And we have the service for um, business exit strategy. Mm -hmm. And then the words business exit strategy is a hyperlink. To the that goes to that page. page. So it. what the robot does is it finds all the links on that front page and mm -hmm. it will visit them, right? And by having these internal links, so in other words, links that don't go out to another website. Got it. That stay within your website. Yeah. They help the robot find their way through your site, right? And then the pages in your website that have the most internal links, mm -hmm. Google's like, oh, well, that must be the most important page in the site. So you can use the little links and then the sitemap to kind of guide Google through your map and say, okay, this is where I want you to go. If you don't link to something, maybe this is not where I want you to go. But if you put up a piece of content and there's no ways for the robot to get to it, it's invisible. No one will be able to find it. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you do have those links. So sitemap, internal links. And number three, this is really important, is Google Search Console. So Google Search Console is your way to interact and tell Google exactly what to do and then find out how you're doing, right? Free tool. So you Google Google, Google Search Console, use a, use your email address to so create the Google, account. So you Google Google Search yeah, Console. Yeah, exactly. Google the Google yeah. Search Console. I will put Got a it. link in there too, but you create an account, you install a little piece of code on your website and then boom. Now that will help you understand how your website is being traveled. Mm -hmm. You can give the site map to Google, whenever you make changes, if you want something to be updated more frequently or quickly, you can submit. So say I create a new article about something I think is important. Rather than wait months for Google to find it, I can submit it and it might hasten that robot finding. Oh, really? It. Yep. So every time you make it, or if you want to really change your website significantly, yep. rather than wait for everything, mm -hmm. submit a new site map, update the link, make sure that Google knows Here's where everything is now. And here's this new thing I created, this new service that my local business has that I want people to find. You update it there, right? Um, and in terms of how a user can do this yourself, most big time companies, WordPress. So for WordPress, By I big develop, time companies, you mean big time uh, uh, website, website builders and Got platforms it. or whatever, yep, yep. have these all, these tools are all available to you really easily. As Add-ins or Add -ins. apps. These, or, are, these yeah. are things, right? So yeah. so for WordPress, a lot of small companies have WordPress websites. There's a plugin called Google Sitekit, which, which, Site Kit, which I use, which I'll mm -hmm. link, that just installs all this stuff for you. You walk through it, and it'll install Search Console. It will install Google Analytics. It will do everything. Just all done. Now you just have it all in there, and you don't have to worry about code or anything like that. Got it. If you use Wix or if you use uh, Squarespace, whatever it is, generally speaking, there's like an area in the settings Mm -hmm. Or in the back end stuff, where they're like, hey, do you want to improve your? It's usually like an SEO setting. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to improve it? Install Google Search Console. They'll walk you through it. Mm -hmm. So, these are things that like people like me know about because we've been doing this for a while. But the number one reason I find that local websites have zero traffic or really, yep. really low yep. is because of these factors. It's not because of anything else. They don't have these things attached to Yeah, exactly. To them. Right. And these are not necessary, but they help. And they right. help diagnose problems. Right. Right. So someone could build a website who doesn't know what they're doing. 
And then there could be crawl factors that they're unaware of, either because they put WordPress together wrong or they just used a template that was bad. You know what I mean? Like these are common things because I mm -hmm. set up my own website, did it by myself. And so they don't know about any of this stuff. So that's where they make mistakes. But the, they're not 100% necessary, but they will help. And they will definitely help if you're like, I don't feel like anybody's going to my website. Right. Well, then go through this. So to help uh, de-confuse and uh, demystify a lot of the, a lot of the verbiage that is attached to this, a lot of the jargon that this world has that may, you know, this, specifically, you know, the, um, the space that you play in, that makes our business owners sometimes confused by it scared by it or like overwhelmed. I feel that way a lot when I delve into this stuff. Like I don't know what, um, go to the description of this video and there'll be links to the key things you want to do, right? Just do that. <laughs> and if you want an immediate chat, this is one of those things where it's like immediate. If you do these three things and you haven't done them yet, update your site map. You might already have one because your website builder might've already put it in there. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a site map. Add some internal links to make it easier for the robots to find what they're doing and submit to Google Search Console. You will see a, a pretty quick boost in traffic. It'll happen pretty quickly. That's so I great. think it's like one of those things where it's like a quick yeah. win, you know? So we talk about words mattering. Yep. So if some of our listeners are going to start like building out the back end and, and you know, putting all that information in, um, talk to some of the areas where it's important that we have the right keywords. So um, what are some areas where you find people don't, don't do enough in putting the right keywords into their website? You just have to have, you just have to talk explicitly about the product or service you sell and where you sell it. So if you're a local business and you work in Seekonk, your website has to talk about Seekonk. Yeah. You have to have it in there. You have to have it on your contact page. You should have it in some of the technical tags, which again, like if you're using a builder, you, it'll be like, Oh, what do you want to put in the title tag? Make sure the town is in there. What do you want to put in the, the, the H tag? So that's your number one heading, right? Or your headings for each thing. Make sure that those have your key products or services in there and the town, right? Like those are, those are important. And then also the next phase of that is doing a little bit of research. And there's free tools to do that. I'll share a couple in the, um, in the description. But might be like do a little bit of research. A good one's Google Keyword Planning, yeah. Which you use for ads, which you might know if you set up ads, you'd be like, or I, I offer plumbing. What other things? It might be like leaky faucet. Like look for things that people actually search for, because sometimes we get stuck in it and we might be all technical, whereas an average person might be searching for something really simple that you're not thinking of, or they might be searching for something that you do that you didn't realize you should be talking about on your website. Right. But the 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 point being is you have to be explicit. You can't just assume that people understand where you are, mm -hmm. right? They can't. You have to talk about it. We offer plumbing services in Taunton. That will indicate to Google that you are a plumber in Taunton. So if people near Taunton are looking for a plumber, they're right. more likely to find. If you don't say any of that, then you will just not be found. So words matter. That's the really simplest way to do it. You yeah. Know? And and if you, this is another one. This is not as quick a win as the last one, but this is if you're not doing this on your website, it can be a, it can be a win. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And then for some people, and we talked about this a little bit already, but all of this we just talked about might not be for you. And that is okay. We talked about, the, the, um, I mean, the things we talked about in the past, because we've had a conversation like this before would be if it's like a niche thing or if it's highly competitive. So like niche might be, I, I'm trying to think of something that's like, if it's a new product or service, then people aren't looking for it. Right? If you're new to market with it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard to sell it through Google search yep. because people aren't looking for it yet, yep. you know, um, or if it's highly competitive and highly competitive could be for a local business. We've talked about this um, with like fitness. If you're offering like nutritional tips, mm -hmm. if you're doing nutritional tips articles, like think about the, the, the number of nutritional, the amount of nutritional advice that's out there. So if you want people to discover you for nutrition advice, you're probably going to have to um, use a different way of getting traffic to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. TikToks about it. You know what I mean? Right. Like things like that that are going to drive people. Yeah. And then people find out about you, then they look for your website. Yeah. Versus Google search. Create local partnerships, right? Where, yeah, you're, exactly. where you're leveraging, you know, and this, a, a really important part of this conversation is getting to the point where you recognize that, all right, I'm going to take a different approach because. Yeah. 
doing this takes either time or money, one of the two. And if this isn't the lane where you should be spending that time or money, then what are we going to advise? Okay, let's do a one-page landing page website just so you have a presence. We'll get it. We'll get it nice. We'll do some keywords in the back end so that in the rare chance someone, but at least you exist so that when people search for you, they do fine. Like if somebody specifically is like, all right, I want to look up this company and they put your direct company name in, it's going to come up and there'll be some viability to you because you're there, but you can now just check that. But it's okay if you decide this isn't going to be the lane where I'm going to get, all, I'm going to get, you know, 30% of my traffic is going to come organically. If that's not your lane, but you just want to have a placeholder, then we still are going to do it well, but then it's just a placeholder. Well, having and, content on your website is not always about people finding you. It could be just for the people who already know who you are. Right. Right. So that's good too. Right. right. So if you, if you can create informational articles that help the people who yes. already know, like if, if they're looking for tax advice or plumbing advice yep. or whatever yep. it is, right? DIY stuff, nutritional. Like if you're a yep. gym and you want to offer nutritional tips, maybe they're not going to find you through the nutritional stuff. That doesn't mean you shouldn't create that content. Right. Because your users might benefit from it. And it's a, it's a, still an add on. It's still important, but it's not going to help you with what the goal is here, yeah. which is to get more traffic when you're not getting any traffic. And I think th what's important for you to understand and is what stage of the lead cycle do you think people are going to go to your website? And if it's what we're talking about right now is we're going to, we want them to go there in the pre pre client stage, right? Oh, they find then we're going to turn them into a client. For a lot of us, and for me, this applies to me a lot of times, I, my website build out is more for existing clients. I already know I'm there and it's a value add to them. So I'm not necessarily getting with the goal of people are just going to randomly, you know, come across me and, and I, that happens, but more so it's I'm sending existing clients back to my website. Like, hey, I got this great resource. Go go to our free our free template. Yeah. Right? Download it. So it's serving from you know, and your company's gonna do that same thing. Our you're either gonna be competing to get found, which a lot of you are, and the ones we're talking about now, like you know, your services, plumbing, you wanna get found. New you want new clients to find you and and contract you. And other organizations out there and other companies may say, you know, no, that's not what I'm going to use it for. I want to use it as a value add for my existing customers who I can, you know, send there and do stuff. So it's it's knowing what where you want people to access it in the pipeline. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, just general, I guess to close this all out, right, is if you really feel like you're not getting any people finding your website. These are the, if you focused on these things, you get you get you get you get somewhere, for sure. Awesome. You start getting some website traffic, and then you got to develop a website that's good enough to get leads, close people, do all the other things that the website needs to do. But in terms of solving the zero traffic dilemma or the really low level traffic, like we only get a couple people visiting mm -hmm. our website. Well, how can we solve that? If you do these things, I feel like. Especially the first blunt force fact number one, you go through that quick little site map, uh, internal links, Google search console, you're going to make a huge difference. Love it. Good stuff. Three blunt force facts today to help you optimize your search. Blunt force fact number one, dudes don't ask for directions. You need to do women. <laughs> blunt force fact number two, words matter. And blunt force fact number three, this game might not be for everyone. I'm Brian Lafauci. Patrick Marino. Until next time. Thank you.